Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, where we are bringing you another live interview here from DCD London, right upstairs of the exhibit hall in Islington here in London. Uh, very excited to be covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations in the digital infrastructure industry. So, of course, we have to interview Munters Data Center Technologies. And so I've got a couple gentlemen here from Munters with me. So we've got John Pettit. Uh, I'm going to read off your title so I get them right. Senior Director of Sales, EMEA, and APAC for Munters Data Center Technologies. And then Craig Badgen. I did it. Okay. <laughs> Director of Offer Strategy and Portfolio Man Management. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start with you first, John. Yeah. Um, so if you could speak a little bit, this is a kind of a broad intro yeah. question about Munters. And mm. how would you say that you help cooling costs and sustainability efforts in data centers in the EMEA region? Yeah, certainly. Mm. So Munters, you know, for the last 70 years, we've really had a long history of innovation in energy efficiency which made us perfect for moving into the data center world probably nearly over 20 years ago now. Um, and we've had sustainability at, at our core for probably the best part of 20 years. And it's probably nowhere more important than the data center world for sustainability in terms of how much power and water the industry use. So anything that we can do as a manufacturer and as an innovator to help the industry, is really what we strive against. We are now in a position where our latest technologies use anywhere between 30 and 40 percent less energy than, than previous technologies. Um, and we can optimize this right through into the cooling process. And it can have a significant impact for our clients in terms of how they design their center, data centers, where they build them, location, the way they power them which is really probably the, uh, the number one um, impacts that's affecting data center designers at the moment. We've got a whole new um, portfolio or our portfolio has increased. We recently acquired um, GeoClima, which is a, a large Schiller manufacturer in, in Italy. And we have um, some really smart technology in that that really goes along with the Munters ethos is reducing our technology, um, uh, sorry, reducing the energy mm. and reducing the water uh, consumption within data centers. So we take advantage of all of the, the latest innovation. Um, we're able to maximize free cooling hours in almost all parts of the world, which again helps with our uh, reduction um, in power for, mm. for the data centers. Amazing. Yeah, so I feel like that leads us nicely into the, uh, the next question about Circle Miser, which <laughs> we'll pass it pass it over to Craig for this. So, um, so you have this exciting solution on the cooling front with Circle Miser. So, can you give us our viewers a little bit of background on that and why yeah. that's important? No, absolutely. So, I mean, we all know chillers. I mean, it's the biggest cooling uh, and heat rejection system that we use within data centers, and um, you know, so where Montes has always been strong is looking at how do you improve good stuff. So we always sort of aim at the, the most efficient technology. So we look at this sort of all three mag bearing comp uh, compressors uh, and they're fantastic at part load conditions, which most data centers tend to operate at. Um, and, th and then the we've been using that type of technology for over 25 years. So we've got that experience. We understand how to run it, how to use it. We know the algorithms that, that makes it work optimally for the for the system so what that helps us do is push up so sort of that we can run uh, these compressors up to 51 degree ambient which in these days of global warming things are getting hotter we've got bigger challenges on the design conditions so we've got that for a start it runs with hfo so low gwp refrigerant so it takes that nice big green box as well you know under the sustainability aspect but the real secret to that is you know, people go for those compressors to get as efficient as they can. We then stepped it up again. So what we do is we have cylindrical condensing coils that increases the condensing area, which reduces the pressure that the compressors have to push against. So actually, again, it reduces the energy required to hit those cooling demands. Now, those cylindrical uh, condensing coils, they increase this area by between 38 and 45 percent, depending on size. And it, it really helps um, the running. The fact we can also do free cooling with it means that we've got that bigger area of free cooling area, like John says, so we can push our free cooling temperatures up so we can do free cooling for far more, far more hours in the year. And then on top of that, we've got uh, cascading evaporators. So what that means is that instead of having one big evaporator that has to cope with the Delta T, we actually have three evaporators that take two, three, four degrees each 
And actually, it means that the, because the temperature going on to the second and third is at a, a higher temperature, it's got less work to do. And that would normally, again, increase further the energy drop by about 10 to 12 percent. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you yeah. for that overview. Um, and so, of course, cooling is one of the big topics here at DCD yeah. London this week. But also, we want to look into the crystal ball mm. a little bit, as everyone's doing mm. here, right? And look into the future, like we always have to do in the data center industry. To, you know, you're you're behind if you're not mm. looking ahead, right? Mm. So, um, so what trends do you see kind of shaping the data center market at NMEA? And maybe we'll start with you, John. Yeah, I think at the moment, um, across, across the globe, actually, I, I don't think there's been a time in the data center industry where innovation that forms such a big part of what's going forward. And this is now being driven from uh, the chip manufacturers. So we're talking NVIDIA, AMD. These people are pushing forward at a tremendous rate and it's beholden on us as manufacturers of, of cooling solutions to keep up and actually get ahead and become future-proof in the way that, that we go forward. So the trends that we're seeing um, are, are obviously all around AI and, and HPC uh, computers uh, computing within these data centers, but also not forgetting that there's still a large element of air-based data centers being built and, and will continue to be built to cope with this. Um, so. For us, it's really about being um, future-proof. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we we spend a huge amount of our uh, you know our budget on R and D to keep ourselves ahead of the game. Um, I'd like to think we we employ probably the most intelligent people around the industry um, to make sure that uh, as and when the technology comes out and changes, and it is moving so quickly, we're ready. And if we can, we'd like to help shape the future as well within the cooling strategy. Would you agree, Craig? No, absolutely, and 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 the the other aspect of it is because we're in such a a fluid, dynamic market where people it, things are moving at a pace. You know, as I said, there's a, a move towards liquid cooling, as we know. Um, there's we we have to be adaptable and flexible as well. So what we do with our systems is make sure that they can be either changed in the future from one to the other, or we can we can we can change the system to suit what goes on. Quite often when designs are done, no one actually knows the makeup of what's going into the data hall. And they don't know, you know, with liquid cooling, there's there's a, a vast range of how much of the heat they take from the server. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if, if they're going to go uh, an NVIDIA-driven server or an AMD-driven server. We don't know exactly how what technology is going to necessarily be there at that time. So we have to have the flexibility to either have a higher percentage of air cooling and a smaller percentage of liquid cooling or vice versa and be able to shift as those decisions are made. Yeah. The other thing that John said quite rightly, the industry is growing massively and, and what's the best way of being future proof? It's building capacity. Right. So we're, we're extending our factory that we only opened two years ago in Virginia. Yeah. So we're adding another 20,000 square meters. We've just opened a factory in Cork, which is uh, you know, 12,000 square meters. And we're looking to do similar uh, builds in, in, in APAC as well in the future. So, yeah. Amazing, yeah, amazing. I, I don't think there's been a, a time in the industry where collaboration is so key mm -hmm. between manufacturers of, in, of innovation such as ourselves and the actual source, i.e. NVIDIA and AMD. Um, and it's great to see. It's great to be part of because I think everyone recognizes the challenge that's ahead. And it's important for us as a manufacturer to be uh, you know, front and center of part of that. Yeah, absolutely. Very well said. And that's a good note to end on, I thank think. You so much. thank you, Don and Craig, thank for you. joining us on JSA Brilliant. TV. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And thank you to all of our viewers. Happy networking, everyone. We'll see you soon.